everybody, this is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how much power do speakers really need. And this is a topic that I've discussed um, numerous times. I've done videos for Audioholics on it, I've done them uh, for other channels, I've talked about it on forums. And I actually think most people get this wrong um, and they misunderstand the issues. And so, first thing we're going to say is uh, how much power do speakers need? Uh, the simple answer is enough. And the problem is figuring out what's enough. A lot of that comes down to the speaker's sensitivity um, and, uh, and then what you're trying to do with it. Now, some of the what you're trying to do with it goes back to how big a room you're in and then also how loud you like to listen. Having said that, a lot of people seem to misunderstand um, how loud they actually listen. And I've had folks say to me before, well, I, I mean... I think a normal receiver is fine with my speakers and I listen at you know moderately loud levels. And then I'll listen to the system and be like, apparently you didn't realize you were listening to a system that was routinely clipping. And I don't recommend that. Uh, it's not good for the speakers, it's not good for your hearing, and uh, a simple amp upgrade would probably have fixed that or at least a more powerful receiver. So how do you figure this out? Well, um, as I said, most people's systems are probably underpowered. That's just a reality. I uh, just did another video. I don't know which one's going to post first, so you know you may see this out of order. But I talked about the Pioneer receiver that I have. So it's a Pioneer Elite receiver. It's from their newest line. It's identical to one of the Ankyo models, and the receiver's power is um, not sufficient <laughs> uh, for my needs. So the speakers that I have. Um, are in-wall speakers. They're not the most sensitive in the world. And what I have been experiencing with these speakers is that when I try to listen even close to, I mean, when I say even close, like minus 10 or even minus 20, but like a really dynamic action movie, the system clips. When I get closer to reference levels, loud people shouting at each other seems to be enough to cause clipping. And um, it's actually been a really long time since I had tried to power a whole system from a receiver. The last couple of surround systems I had done for myself involved a separate amp. I do have plenty of amps sitting around and I could hook one up, but it just, I've been lazy and I haven't done that. And so what I, what I find is that a lot of people don't know what clipping sounds like. And I, if I can figure out a way to do that for you, I will. Actually, let me show you on the microphone by placing it closer so you can hear. But keep in mind, the kind of clipping you get with movies is rarely going to be the example I'm going to show you. It's more likely going to be something where it's just short instant peaks in the signal that get clipped off and that you hear rather than long. But if I take this microphone here and I talk like this to the point that you can hear the system clipping, then what happens is that the system will clip to a point that it sounds really bad. So you heard that it got louder. Um, and actually, I didn't see the signal clipping much, so maybe this didn't work. But if it did, hopefully what you were hearing was a sort of compression and a hardness and an irritation uh, to the sound. And that's what happens when it clips. And when it does it for just really short bursts, a lot of people don't notice it, or they actually just assume that that was in the recording because it was loud, like explosions are supposed to sound like that, but they're not. It's actually because most systems are not tracking the explosion's dynamics correctly. So how much amplifier do you need? Um, as I said, there's a technical answer to this. It's you. what do you want to do? Well, you want to hit reference levels, 105 uh, decibels at the listening position, and the speakers have a certain sensitivity. Let's say it's 85 dBs at 2.83 volts at one meter. And then we can sit there and we can calculate out what that would be to give you a number. And reality is you're going to need, I, I could probably figure it out here, you're going to need probably about 2,000 watts to do that. So that speaker cannot achieve reference levels at a typical listening distance. Okay, so that's not realistic. Well, maybe the speakers are better. They're 90 decibels. And maybe we're not trying to hit 105 decibels. We're trying to hit 102 decibels. Well, I actually have a way on my phone that I use to figure this out. So I go to this app I have, um, and you guys should check it out. It's called PA Calculate. And if I go to, it's, they've got various, so PA Calculate, and people can see that in the phone. And they have a calculators, and I go to acoustics, and they have SPL, and there's some things we need to figure out here. But let's first start with what the listening distance is. So I'm going to say that my listening distance is 12 feet. We only want one speaker because the levels we're trying to achieve 
are based on that. Now I'm gonna say that the speaker sensitivity is we're gonna go with that 90 dB. Now this is one watt, one meter. 2.83 volts is one watt at eight ohms. So this is fine for calculation purposes, but if you have four ohm speakers, you need to think about the fact that your receiver should be putting out more power. The problem is the assumption that's done in those calculations when you, you continue to use 2.83 volts is that the receiver doubles its power um, into that lower impedance, which is not true. Very few receivers can actually do that. But let's now figure out how much power we need with this 90 dB speaker to hit this. Now this is a free, free space, so we have to actually make a correction for this, but um, four to six decibels is actually potentially reasonable for room gain, maybe even high. Uh, it would depend a lot on the room and the RT60. So I'm gonna subtract this out, and I'm gonna say that the receiver can do 100 watts. So where does that get me? Well, in free space with no extra boost, it gets me to 98.7. Um, so if we get the extra six decibels, which we could do by just putting it into the sensitivity, that puts us at 104. So if the room was fairly reflective actually, had a pretty high RT60, and we actually got a full six decibels of free space, of uh, in-room boost, if you will, which is not totally correct, then a normal receiver would be sufficient with that 90 dB speaker to achieve uh, 104.7 dB, so we'll exceed the 102. So for a typical living room system, we would say that that's fine. Going back to that 85 dB speaker, we'd only be at around 99.7. Um, that's, again, that's with the room gain already added in with a 100 watt receiver. So that one's not even gonna hit the 102. In fact, to get to 102, we would need closer to 200 watts. Receivers can't do that. There are no receivers in the market that can do that into eight ohms. There are some that can do it into four ohms, but not with five channels running simultaneously. So you're probably gonna need an external amplifier for that. And, and, and then of course, as speakers get more sensitive. Now here's one of the problems. I did that all based on theoretical calculations. Most speakers, I shouldn't say most. We, it's not easy to trust the numbers you get from manufacturers. So with a lot of manufacturers getting uh, accurate numbers on sensitivity is difficult because they often include the room gain that they assume happens in that. So they'll say the in-room sensitivity of the speaker is 95 dB. And if that number is correct, which as I said depends on RT60, uh, it also depends on some other properties of the room, then sure that works, but um, if their assumptions are wrong, you may be overestimating what your speaker can do. So if we go back into this app that I was calculating for you, um, and let's just go back to what I was trying to achieve before with that speaker. And let's just say that we have, again, a 90 dB speaker, but we don't get six dBs, we only get three dBs of boost. It would take around 250 watts with that 90 dB sensitive speaker to hit reference levels. If we go back to the 85 dB speaker, and we want to hit reference levels, we'd actually need 1,000 watts. And that's a, in a typical home theater with a relatively low RT60 at a listening distance of 12 feet, which is not huge. 1,000 watts per speaker. Well, how many speakers can handle 1,000 watts, especially one that's that insensitive? The answer is very, very few, if any. There are very few products that can handle that much power, let alone produce it. I mean, the other thing you've got to do is produce it. So in some ways, how much amplifier power you need is more dependent on um, what it is you're trying to achieve. And that's a tricky question I know to answer. So I'm gonna assume that most of you who are watching this video are really just probably trying to achieve not reference levels, but what we, we call like typical living room levels for movies, which is around 102 dB max. It puts the voices quieter. I will say for those of you who watch movies at low volumes and then complain about not understanding the voices, remember that movies are designed to be listened to with the voices averaging 85 decibels. That number is what they calibrate 
the mixing system at. And then that's what they, when I say calibrate, they also then listen at that level. So they're hearing it at 85 and they're mixing in the voices and the effects and everything at that level. And so speech intelligibility was designed around 85 dB. If you take it down to, if we take three decibels off of that and go down to 82 dB, in a lot of movies, the voices are hard to understand, um, are harder to understand. And we've only gone down three decibels from reference level. Well, I hear people constantly say, I don't listen at reference, I listen at minus 20. I do it too, actually, because it's pretty loud. So here's the problem. Nobody ever mixed the movie with the intent of understanding voices 20 decibels below that. I mean, now we're talking about 65 decibels is the average voice level when you're doing that. Um, that's so low that you're only slightly above the ambient noise of the room in a lot of cases. And so, yeah, of course you can't understand voices and it's why it's a problem. Um, and so one of the simple answers is you got to turn it up, unfortunately. If you don't like all the big... Uh, dynamic explosions that you're getting in the movie, I mean, all I can say is it is what it is. That's how they were designed. But going back to amplifier powers, we're going to kind of stick with standard numbers that make sense, which is reference levels are a bit below. And what I would say is that a typical receiver is sufficient for a typical speaker that's on the, what I would call slightly above average sensitivity when you're trying not to achieve reference levels, but more like that 102, 100 to 102 range, you're gonna probably hit that with those speakers with a 100 watt rated receiver. Um, if you're trying to hit reference levels, you're gonna need either an above average, like well above average sensitivity speaker, or you're gonna need a better yet receiver. I, there really aren't a lot on the market that could do this. So you're probably looking at the top of the line or the next down from the top of the line to get at a power level that's close enough to do that. Much more simply, you just buy a external amplifier that can do 200 watts. So 200 is gonna now get you closer to reference levels with these speakers. Um, if your speakers are below average sensitivity, and there's a lot of speakers on the market that are, and you should look at our reviews that we do over on Audioholic. So I'm sending it now to another channel, but it's I work, with, I work for them. So. In Audioholics, we measure the sensitivity of speakers. And so if you go and look, look at the speakers that we've reviewed recently, and then look at the manufacturer's sensitivity rating and see how close they are. It's very common for them not to match by a certain amount. You gotta use the real number for these calculations, but going back to that, for below average sensitivity, or really average sensitivity in that 85 dB range, you're gonna need 200 watts just to hit acceptable levels. So that's the, that 100 to 102 dB range of um, peaks. So again, that's getting now voices down to 80, 82 dB. Um, and you're gonna need an, an impossible amount of power to hit reference levels. So that speaker just won't work for reference levels anymore. Um, and so I hope, hopefully this is helpful. I, you know, for those of you who are thinking you could get away with like a sound bar and hit reference levels, like we measured them once. Um, they can't. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be obvious. You know, it should be obvious. I should say it shouldn't be a surprise that you know sound bars are just not capable of doing that. You know, they they can realistically do peaks that are more like ninety to ninety five decibels for the best of them. Some of the ones that are rated at like one hundred and five, they're talking about the bass. <laughs> the bass could do one hundred and five, but the sound bar is really peaking out at like ninety to ninety five. And so once you get it up at, at the right volume level, you're way, way, way below reference levels. I mean, voices then are gonna be averaging. If that's how you've got it set up to keep the thing from distorting, <clears throat> voices are gonna to have to be uh, more like 75 decibels, which you know, a lot of people consider that loud enough, but it is well below reference levels and it does make speech harder to understand. So sound bars often have about 25 or 30 watts per speaker at the high end that would be like a better quality sound bar and that should give you an idea why we can't get away with that like that's just not enough power so as i said the 100 watt receiver remember the 100 watt receiver doesn't really put out 100 watts the 100 watt receiver is going to probably put out 60 to 80 watts once all the channels are being driven and pushed hard during those dynamic peaks. That 105 decibel number that we're trying to hit in a reference level system, that's the maximum output. That's a, essentially a peak that we're trying to hit. So the average level is only 85 decibels. And um, so remember, 
even to hit the 85 decibel number, you're still gonna need a, a good amount of power. That one watt rating, remember, is one watt, one meter. Now we're out farther than that. We're, we're out at four meters, roughly. So you, you can understand that that increase in distance now requires that we're playing not at 85 dBs at one watt, one meter. We're playing much louder than that. In fact, we can calculate that out. So using the same app that we were using before, with the same speaker, with the same assumed in-room boost of a couple of decibels, three decibels, we want to know what it would take to do, let's say, 85 decibels, about 20 watts to do that. So the, the, the receiver needs to be able to sustain 20 watts through all of the different channels. Like in my system, that's seven channels in the, in the family room system. It needs to do at least 20 watts. So you, during voices average speaking, obviously any halfway decent receiver is gonna easily be able to do 20 watts through all of the different channels. As you start to push it up though, you know, we wanna hit those peaks. As I said, let's, let's just say we wanted to hit 95 decibels, right? What would that take? So that would be about 80 watts uh, to hit 95 decibels. So let's just say a more reasonable peak of, of 95 decibels. Now we're at a power point level that probably is the limit of the receiver. That's, to be honest, that's probably as much as that receiver can do when all seven channels are being driven. Even if the surround speakers are not being driven as hard and the, and the overhead speakers not being driven as hard, that power supply still is really not capable of producing enough power. So to kind of wrap this all up, how much power do you really need? More than you think, enough to get the job done. There is no hard and fast numbers I can give you, but hopefully as we went through those calculations, you kind of saw why receivers are often inadequate. Um, a halfway decent receiver, like a 12 to $1,500 receiver, is only adequate with average speakers at doing what I would call typical living room levels, not anywhere near reference levels. If you're trying to get closer to reference levels like that 102, 103 decibel, you really probably need an external amplifier that can do 150 to 200 watts. And if you wanna do reference levels, average speakers are not gonna cut it. You're gonna need an above average speaker and you're still gonna need 200 watts. So. That's, that's how much I think on average you need, and, and certainly more. In fact, when I sell Prolisten systems in order to ensure that we have headroom, and I like an extra three decibels of headroom, um, I typically spec that people make sure that the front speakers have a good 400 watts each, um, and then the surround speakers you can get away with less, but like 200 watts each. So that to me is adequate to have a little headroom, just a little headroom. All right, well, hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, please subscribe and uh, that'll keep you on top of all the new videos coming out. Thanks.